Okay guys, I'm back. A uh, huge intermission <laughs> because of the technical difficulty of like my phone maxing out with the slightest bit of video. Um, it's been like an hour of trying to upload videos in all different ways. So I'm on my computer now. I have no idea how people do videos. Like people ask me, Victoria, do online classes? And I'm like, just to make a 10 minute video can take my entire day of technological failure and frustration. Like. I could be scraping a hide right now. It's completely ridiculous. So I know the volume is a lot lower on this one. I'm just gonna see how this video goes. So I was talking about buckskin. Um, I took a break from buckskin for a few years for the most part. This week, the last few weeks, I've been uh, in my personal tanning camp and uh, working on four deer hides and wanted to do them all. Buckskin, brain tan, and also working on some brain tan furs. Um, so, I'm not gonna talk about buckskin, um, but I did want to just talk about brain tan furs a little bit, um, just because if you are starting to brain tan furs or haven't yet, um, at least for me, when I started, it was really, really confusing to even know what I was aiming for. Like, what's the kind of leather that um, I'm even supposed to expect is the goal? So, so again, like I said, here's my first Mr. Fox. Um, and this is a great example to me of what to me is a typical and good brain tanned fur, um, which is, you know, flexible. It's flexible, it doesn't make noises, like crunchy noises, um, when I scrunch it up into a ball, as you can see. Um, it's not, you know, certainly especially like, you know, thicker parts of hides or necks, like they're soft. They're not buttery, like they're never going to be buckskin. Brain tanned fur on hides, whether it's little, a small fur bear, like a fox or a rabbit or a um, squirrel, or whether it's large, like if you're brain tanning a hair on deer hide or sheep hide or goat hide or buffalo, you know, whatever. I've never worked on buffalo. Good luck to um, brain tanned hair on hide is never going to be the supple softness of buckskin, you know, like this, the buckskin, where it's just like, it's it's the softest, it's the epitome of the softest, softest of natural tanning. It really is. Um, a fur is never going to be that because it can't go through all the intense manipulation that buckskin can, right? With buckskin, uh, you're removing the epidermis, which is the thin layer of skin right under the hair, then you're removing the grain layer, which is the layer of skin underneath the epidermis, uh, and thus the hair follicles come out. So you're removing more layers of the skin, which allow the skin to stretch and expand. You are doing major manipulating of wringing and softening very intensively, and you're putting the hide through a much more vigorous um, manipulation than you possibly could with a fur. If you did the same thing with fur, it would no longer be a fur. You would lose your hair. Um, so that's just the way it is. Um, uh, nevertheless, you know, I like furs to be, I expect them to be still soft, to be a garment quality leather, right? Meaning something that's pleasant to touch but mainly something that you know you could wear on your body that um, conforms to your body, you can make a garment out of it. It's not gonna be like a stiff, crinkly thing that like if you're walking around it, it crinkles, you hear it. You know, it's like when I wear, wear a fur, it should just be soft, you know, I should be able to move with it. I don't wanna hear it, right? Um, so, <laughs> how do you do that with brain tan furs? Um, so for one, this is a fox. Foxes are, to me, like, the most 
joyful fur to brain tan. Um, they just tan so well, so easily. They're thin skins. Their skin tends to be thin and pretty supple, and they don't have thick necks or thick faces necessarily as much as other animals do, um, like raccoons. <laughs> so, um, so here's the trick. Okay, so here's um, Fox that I just softened yesterday. Da da da! I'm so happy. Um, I'll even back up. Amazing the color difference. Um, yeah, so this hide I just softened. Finished softening yesterday. Um, it's very similar to this fox. It's actually a little bit stiffer. Show you, especially like right in the neck and spine parts. Um, you know, it's just like. It's not buttery, um, but it's flexible. Like if I wanted to, I could bunch, like bunch this whole hide together, including the face. You know that I even want the face to be flexible, right? It's not super, super flexible. Flexible enough. And I'm like. What I'm going for. And on very thin parts of the hide, like the belly areas, you know, it just gets incredibly thin and soft, you know, ridiculously soft. But that's just going to be on the belly areas. Um, you know, this hide hasn't been smoked yet. It's just, just amazing to me how white um, brain tanned hide is after you soften it. It's almost like a spirit entity. Like it's almost unnervingly white. Pure white. There's just such a particular smell to brain tan. I just can't uh, can't quite explain. Um, I don't know why we're getting dark. So and then here's the difference. So here's a fox um, which is just dried well scraped, not actually done scraping yet, but this was like stretched, tacked, dried, has not had any um, tanning done to it necessarily, it hasn't had any dressing put into it, it hasn't been softened yet. Um, so the one that's not done, you can see that like, the fox has thin skin, like this is flexible, you know, it's not like stiff hard plastic, right, like the skin, I can get it to move, I can crumple it up, but listen, it's very loud, it's very, it's almost like thin plastic, um, though like very thin belly is more malleable, okay, so that's just, that's the change that we're going for from that. To this. That's what we're going for. Okay, so what's the big secret? Um, so for one, this is just me. This has just been all my experience over time. Um, is to don't expect to fully soften a brain tanned fur in one go around of softening. <laughs> like nobody told me that. I never heard that. You know, in my first couple of years of brain tanning, I thought I messed. Up. I thought it was a failure. You know, even my first fox here, like I tanned him twice, which now I know is exactly what you're supposed to do. But I thought like, oh god, I failed on the first round. I couldn't get it soft. I had to, you know, do it twice. No, that's actually like normal. So that's what I'm saying. When you're brain tanning, any fur on hide, expect to do two rounds of dressing and softening. That's normal from everything I know and all my experience, right? So 